Stuart, if we can start with Sunday, um, result aside, plenty of positives to take from that performance. Yeah, listen, I think we were good for uh, large spells of the game. The game looked exactly how I would want it to in uh, large periods, especially the first half. Um, especially the first half, you know, we, we carved out a number of good opportunities. Um, we tested their goal. Um, we never gave up anything at all in the first half. And the way opportunities, I didn't think, maybe a, a, a half chance, I suppose, into the back post area for Maida. Uh, towards the end of the half, but in general, I just thought that we we functioned and we played really well. Um, that said, I still think that there's more to give in that first 45. I think there was several incidents where I felt that we could have hurt Celtic a little bit more than what we did. Maybe carved out a better chance than than what we did, um, and that's always the perfectionist bit in you that you, you have to be striving for. And as we knew in the second half what was what was going to come, Celtic are are, are working hard to to be in a title race and obviously they, they, it looks like Rangers and Celtic will lock horns firmly between now and the end of the season to uh, fight out for a league title so you know that there has to be reaction and you know that they have to um, they have to try and get themselves back in the game and I kind of felt that that always the, the narrative is that Celtic were um, Celtic you know Celtic blew us away at the end I, I just think a, a lack of concentration um, in that last couple of minutes and that hurts an awful lot when you've put so much into 94 minutes and you've two minutes injury time to play um, that, that that becomes such a difficult thing to take for me as a manager um, but also for what the players put in you know and, and, and if ever there's a lesson is the two games we've had against Celtic here at Firth Park where you pile so much into a game of football and you switch off in that uh, in that last few moments um, but when you play against top level opposition um, for our young players especially that's the biggest learning curve that you're going to get the concentration levels the physical output needs to stay the same right up to the very end of the game so from that hopefully we come out better um, and learn some lessons as a group um, but again I think if we put in a, a similar level of performance on Wednesday I think we'll be in a game of football albeit it's going to be completely different. Um, you mentioned young players there I think for your goal there were three players involved 22 or younger um, seems to be something really important to you to bed in young players in, in, in your squad. How pleased are you with that with that goal? Yeah, I'm absolutely uh, absolutely delighted with the with the quality of goal. Um, always for me, it, it, it doesn't matter who's involved in those moments of quality. But I think you make a good point that um, I think ourselves. As a football club, but certainly myself as a manager, um, it's something that's really important to me. I believe I've always been someone that will give young players an opportunity. I believe I'm someone that isn't fearful of taking out experienced players. Um, I think a lot of managers may say different, but um, that, that can be the most difficult aspect as somebody that's got a voice and somebody that wants to give an opinion. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not scared of that in any way, shape or form. Um, what I have to do is try and pick the best players that I possibly can for giving games, you know, because again, tomorrow becomes a different game for us, a different type of game. Um, but I just felt that the that, that some of these young guys acquitted themselves really, really well um, in the game. And not least Lennon Miller's turn, uh, <laughs> which for me was probably the best piece of skill on show in Scottish football over the weekend. And I've not seen every incident in Scottish football, but uh, it must be some it must be an absolute moment of brilliance if it tops that because um, I think somebody said to me yesterday that there was a suggestion from some quarters that he didn't mean it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so I think everybody could see he had a picture in his head of receiving the ball and where he was going to go, but it's not just that, it's the way to pass when he comes out of it just to leave it for, for Blair Spittle. Um, but he had so many other moments in the game, didn't he? You know, he, he, he puts his through and goal a couple of times, Steel Bear, Jack Vale, just with his way to pass um, and, his, and his vision and what he can see around about him. But I think most most important, you know, and I'm kind of jumping on Lennon, but yeah, Jack Vale, Adam Devine, uh, Georgie Jen, all these types of guys in there. Um, but I think what really impressed me so much, um, which is the bit that get that buys you trust at the top level, um, is, is what he does when we don't have the ball. You know, his discipline, uh, getting getting through his work and I spoke after the game and I was a little bit frustrated um, and it's not about specific individuals but it's it's a general point that we we need to strive to to to, to complete the 90 minutes you know when when you're when you're so good and you offer so much um, you know I'm just talking in general as I say that um, that's a part of development so as much as I want to give young players opportunities when they've got talent and I believe that they've they've got something to offer um, I do have this little bit of a hang up in the in the game um, where I think I don't know whether it's academies I don't know you know if there's a, a different feel in the game but 
I always just think of the mindset back in the day when I was when I was a young player, and certainly people that I surrounded myself with, and it was always that you you have to condition yourself mentally and physically to get through ninety minutes of the game. I'm saying it again today. I said it after the game to players. I said it after the game to press. Um, and again, I might put myself forward for a wee bit of criticism with that. It's not. It's it's, it's this sense of something being good but can be better. Um, and 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 as I say, it's it's my job to try and push people to make sure um, that we can get to those levels and we can get to those levels for 96 minutes because I genuinely believe that's what the top players do. I think Pep Guardiola came in for some criticism this season, didn't he, when he didn't make a change in a game of football and he didn't bring on a sub and he obviously has his reasons for that but I think what it does is it shows you that the guys at the top end that play so many games are, are equipped to be able to do that and you know if we want to be the best we can be as a club and players want to be the best they can be as, as individuals then I, I still believe that the game lasts 90 plus minutes. You mentioned it's a different challenge tomorrow against Livingston. What type of challenge do you expect? Yeah, it's going to be a completely different game. I, I, I always go on record before we play against the likes of Kilmarnock and Livingston. I do genuinely believe it's a completely different game on the surface. Um, I, I do. It's a completely different opponent, obviously, from what we faced um, on Saturday, uh, on Sunday. Sorry, here against Celtic. Um, and and it's about trying to prepare yourself as best you possibly can. Now we need to we need to try and do some of the things that that, that we've done very well. I, I think at times against Hearts and against Celtic, and we know we're going through this this tough run of games, this real difficult run of games. But I believe going away to Pataudry, we've acquitted ourselves so well in in so many aspects. But we've also come up short in several as well. So um, it's, it's it's an awareness of that. But we have to come up with a, a game plan that I think fits fits this particular game, you know, I, I know you're going to have to defend your penalty box, I know you're going to have to be good at restarts in the game, um, there's a different bounce to the ball, um, there's a different feel for the surface and all these different things, um, but no excuses, no excuses whatsoever, we just have to make sure that we acknowledge all those things um, and and I think what, what we come up against is, is, is a spirited Livingston side, I think that they showed by being two goals down um, as they were in, on Saturday against Ross County, um, they showed that they're still 100% committed to the cause and still believe that they can pick up points and I've heard Davy speaking once or twice over over the piece that you know there's there's absolutely 100% fight there and um, the, the very nature of getting back into that game on Saturday tells me that it's going to be a difficult task for us and that they carry and they possess some 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 real good uh, attributes they've got quality they managed to get a couple of goals um, so again I'm just mindful of all of that and it's, it's my job now um, to really part the Celtic game for us as disappointing as that was and focus on giving the players as much information as, as what we think will fit uh, the game on Wednesday. And last one for me, it seemed like a bit of nervousness for Ross County's first goal on Saturday against Livingston. Is that something you couldn't capitalise on? No, I, do, I think that I think if you've seen the same traits coming across over over a period of time, then then yes, but. Individual errors, um, individual mistakes, we've seen plenty of them um, ourselves. Um, I don't necessarily think it sometimes leads to a specific thing that's going to happen in a game, but um, I think when you've got good players like I believe we've got, if we can try and service them in the right areas and ask the right questions of Livingston, then you always believe you're going to create chances and, uh, and gain opportunities to score goals. But no, with regards um, maybe the opening goal against Livingston, you don't sit there and say that that's, that same exact thing is going to happen happen again. Um, if I'd seen, you know, five, six, seven occasions where that where I've seen that, then fine, you maybe allude to it. Um, but no, I think we have to just try and get our, our, our forward thinking players involved in the game with reasonable service, um, get them in towards the final third. And I think that we've shown against most, if not all teams in this division that we, that we can create chances, as well as try to deal with the threat that Livingston bring going the other way. Stuart, can we get an update on Harry Payton and his injury? Yeah, again, it's just another one of these kind of freak incidents. Um, what what we're saying at this minute in time is Harry's going to be out for a significant period of time. I'm not going to uh, timestamp that for you, um, but he's he's sustained a, a significant a injury to his ankle, um, and it's just another frustration. You know, again, no making excuses, no making, uh, no feeling sorry for myself, but. I think we've had a wee look through some of the statistics and some of the uh, some of the numbers there, um, and and I think fifteen players have been out for over a month for us this season. Um, some of them far more than a month, and I think when you take that into account, then it makes it tough. You know, it really does make it difficult. Um, 
Now, so many of them have been freak accidents, impact injuries, that type of thing. Um, we actually don't feel as if we've had that many muscle injuries, which is quite incredible and amongst a lot of that. Um, so from that side, yeah, we're always doing our due diligence to try and make sure that we train properly and that we prepare the players as best we can. We've tweaked and changed things um, in accordance to what we have available, different surfaces, all these different things that you look at in the modern game. Um, but for 15 of our players, uh, since the start of the season, they've been out for over a month and some, as I say, several more. Um, is a big ask for such a small squad or that what I felt was the smallest squad smallest group of players um, and I think in amongst that I think I've only had six players that, that I can pick from that I haven't had any any injury um, whatsoever and haven't had uh, a situation where they've not been available um, so Harry goes into that number and he goes into that mix um, but I just genuinely hope that at some point a lot changes and we uh, and, and we're able to have that fresh squad and as many options as we can have to, to pick from because undoubtedly it makes you stronger. Obviously it's so close down in the bottom six, not only into the relegation zone but also up into the top six. Is tomorrow night just a, a must win or a massive three points? Nah, we, we, we say that all the time, you know, we, we build a story and we want to try and put more emphasis on it, I get that, I understand that's the job but um, I'm going to go to my same old party line, I don't, I don't treat that game any this game any different from what I did Celtic here on Sunday, I don't treat it any different from Ross County here midweek a couple of weeks ago or Aberdeen at Pataudry, it's the same because if I say any different I'm cheating people, you know, that would suggest that I'm not trying as hard for other games, um, this, this one becomes as important as what the rest of them are, quite clearly an emphasis on it because of league positions or whatever, um, but I can assure you we'll prepare exactly the same way and I know it's the politically correct answer but it's true, it is the, it is the answer that, that if you ask any one of my players I believe they would give you the exact same answer because that's how we focus and that's how we prepare. Just finally for me, Dylan Wells obviously has been, there's been reports that he's been linked with other clubs out of contract this summer, is there any update in his contract situation? No, Dylan's a, a, a player that's a uh, very much a part of our plan, someone we've worked incredibly hard with, spent a lot of time with the first team uh, this season. He's a talented lad, um, you know, we're trying to get the best out of him. There's been contact with Dylan um, and his agent to, you know, everybody knows where we stand on that one. We want to keep Dylan at the football club, we want to keep our best young players here, um, so no secret there. These uh, these stories always seem to make their way out. I keep asking myself the question, where does that come from? Who's led with the story? And um, a lot of time you see the same name involved so you do but yeah from my side there's been there's been no mention of that whatsoever I, I was made aware that there was a, a report or a link or a rumour that was pitched out there last night but no we've uh, we absolutely want to keep the young player at, at the football club because as I say when you've put in so much as what the guys have done through you know uh, previous years before I come to the football club um, but especially when I've come here and really started to involve him in the first team because he's another one of the, the young crop that we believe in and we want to try and help him make strides in his career. Stuart, with his highs, you leave you obviously with Carl Slattery out as well, Jonathan Hardy is going to be fit for the next game or two but you're you kind of, you kind of really getting to limited options in midfield as well as you have to start thinking about and things as well as it gets to that stage. Yeah, I, th I think you, you, you're always you're always thinking about solutions, but you know, I probably certainly the coming back after the break, I wasn't imagining that I would be sitting with with two players that are going to be out for the period of time that they are in Callum and Harry. So it's a huge blow, especially as it's uh, very good performers, guys that have that have done so well for us. You know, they, they genuinely have done the two of them over the course of the season have been pivotal, and you know, you trust players, um, you only trust them because they want they bring to the party and those are two guys that, that I inevitably trust uh, and I think that what makes it difficult is you feel like you get Lennon Miller back from a long term injury and then you lose those two and um, at times you want to see them together and at times you want to see them combine and play in the same midfield unit um, Andy's been a blow for us of course because of how he started when he came in um, and what he brings to the party we're hopeful that we, we're starting to nudge him a wee bit closer to being available but again that's going to take another, another few days at least um, but yeah, we're always trying to evolve, we're always thinking about tweaking and changing um, what we do. What I've been a believer in this, uh, you know, this time around is, is, is trying to find something that I think works for the group of players, trying to profile it so that we recruit to that. Um, and obviously if you lose key players within that, then it starts to get the mind uh, going in terms of what plan B, C and D would look like. And uh, then, you know, if we lose any more players in that area of the park, then of course it's going to have to require an adjustment. Uh, an adjustment to what we do. 
the good thing I suppose with Glenn and Mallory he's shown he's so versatile, he was really influential and kind of like a deeper left field goal, but he yeah, you know, it's, uh, when I when I come into the football club, I'd ask the question a few times because you 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 want to talk to the people that have worked longest with the player and that know him um, really really well. Um, I believe in an all round midfielder. I've always said this. I'm a little bit old fashioned here. I'm just pigeonholing someone and saying you can only do one job. Um, I was sort of brought up and educated as a central midfield player. Um, to try and do everything. I sure said, could I do everything? Uh, there was bits that I could do better than others. Um, but it was always my mindset was to try and be as rounded as you possibly could be. And when I, you know, when I watched Lennon, um, especially when I was working with him and I slated the under 18s and reserve level last season, um, he's got an eye for goal, he's got an eye for a key pass in a forward area. Um, his defensive data is, you know, at times off the charts as well. So that starts to form a, a complete midfield player. And again, for a manager, what it does is it just provides a trust that I can ask him to do two or three different roles you can you can include several guys in that I felt Harry Payton was somebody that could do that I think Callum Slattery someone that could do that so you can start to see the profile of the midfielders we've got Andy Halliday um, Blair Spittle unquestionably um, with what he does going forward but also what he does going back so as many of these guys as we could have well rounded then you know in answer to your first question there it probably gives you scope for alterations and changes from what you've already got